What's up lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am, as you can see by this gorgeous logo, the malt activist. That's right, sent down by the gods of whiskey for your benefit. What benefit you ask? Well, let me tell you something. The benefit of saving money on whiskeys. That's right, I try whiskeys so that you don't have to. And then I tell you what to buy so that you can save your money. That's right. I help you save money on your whiskey purchases. I am like the Groupon for whiskey. That's right. I am going to now brand myself as the new Groupon for whiskeys. Was that dramatic enough? I think it was. I practiced that like five times before saying it. Okay, cool. So what are we doing today? We're doing something different. I have uh, one, two, three, four whiskeys to try. As you can tell by the title, uh, they're all from the Glen Scotia distillery in Campbelltown. I have with me the double cask, the 15 year old, 18 year old, the Victoria. Okay, so full disclosure, I am not a huge fan of Glen Scotia whiskeys, and that's purely because maybe like 10 years ago, I tried two or three of them, and they were all kind of meh, and so I was like, okay, you know what? I think there are other more interesting whiskeys to try, so let me, let me go try those. And then I never really got around until now, when I got my hands, and don't ask me how, well I did, got my hands on these four different whiskeys. I have heard that they have kind of, uh, you know, uh, redone their recipes and, and the whiskeys are different and much better. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try them and see. Okay, the first one, the double cask. There you go, that's what it looks like. They are non-chill filtered and no, no color added. Good, so good start, Glen Scotia. Now let's see what it says on the label. Uh, Glen Scotia Double Cask is a classic Campbelltown malt, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. Our master blender handpicks each cask matured in first fill bourbon uh, before finishing this outstanding single malt whiskey in Pedro Jimenez Sherry Casks. This provides the perfect balance of rich spicy fruits overlaid with the Glen Scotia characteristics of sea spray and vanilla oak finish. Interesting. So, Matured first in first fill bourbon barrels and then finished off in PX casks. Nice, rich, fruity nose. No off notes. What do we know about this? This is bottled at 46%. Very good. I like entry level whiskeys at 46% because that's exactly what this is. This is an entry level uh, core range for Glen Scotia and 46% is the bare minimum that you should be uh, bottling your whiskeys at. I hope every single distiller is listening to this. I get the vanilla coconut flavors, that's from the first fill bourbon. But then now I get this slight funk and meatiness that you would get from the PX Sherry. The leather. And the dark fruits. So it's not It's not like, oh my God, this is the most amazing nose I've ever, uh, you know, come across, but it's holding its own and for an entry level whiskey, I think it's doing all right. Yeah, some black salt in here as well. Neutralize. Look, I'm not gonna get picky, but I think there's like a very, very mild hint of sulfur in this. I could be wrong, it could be just a very active PX, PX cask. Overall, I think the nose is kind of decent. It started off nice, um, but now I'm getting this slight funk in it. Uh, it was not, again, necessarily a bad thing, and I think most people don't even pick it up. So, for me, uh, you know, uh, a fairly respectable B minus, if you like. Uh, excellent, okay, good stuff. Uh, chin chin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
okay butterscotch caramel vanilla coconut mm, spices black pepper leather oak instantly recognizable flavors a uh, bit hit on the mouth feel um ah, decent finish feel it right here sitting in my sitting in my cheeks and on my palate doing a good job of staying there so wow my first impressions not bad not bad at all um i don't know how much this costs let me just see what the price of this is wow it's at a pretty affordable 36 37 pounds not bad this is not bad so you know i take back what i said about uh, not liking Glen Scotia. I'm really, really happy with with this whiskey. Not because it is a phenomenal whiskey. Yeah, palate is also like a B minus, which is like kind of just maybe maybe slightly above average. Just average to above average. Maybe just average, but slightly above average. Make up your mind. Um, so, uh, just, just, uh, just the mouthfeel is a bit thin for me, but everything else kind of works and guys, let's face it. I mean, for 36, 37 pounds, I think this is a very decent whiskey. It comes in at 46%, which is fantastic. Um, it has, uh, it has good flavors, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Yeah, a bit oaky as well. And you know, without being too critical, this is one of those evenings where you're like, hey, let me just sit down and you know, my friends come over. Hey, I'm just gonna serve you uh, a, a decent, uh, decent, not very complex whiskey for us to start the evening off. And I think this would just, this would be one of, uh, you know, this would be perfect for that. Uh, and again, you can buy, uh, you can buy a bunch of these because of the price, right? So well done. I think I think the double cask. Uh, if I want to be overly overly critical, is yeah, like I said, not the most phenomenal whiskey in the world. But given the given its price point, given what it offers against that price point, uh, I think this is a no-brainer uh, for you to pick up for sure. Good job, Glen Scotia. You have my seal of approval. Thank you for sticking around because our next whiskey is the Glen Scotia 15 year old. Let's put it in the glass for you. Again, non-chill, filtered, no color added. There you go, that's what it looks like. Okay, what do we know about this? It's 15 years old. It's bottled at a good 46%. I would, you know, I would think that if you go higher on uh, on the years, maybe you should amp up the ABV as well. So I would have, I've not drunk it yet, I'll be honest, but I would have maybe liked to have seen this at maybe 48%. Let's see what the box says. Okay, Glen Scotia 15, exceptional single malt, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. Uh, distilled in Campbelltown, no shit and gently matured in our finest American oak barrels before bottling. So, doesn't say first fill, just says American oak barrels. So I'm gonna guess a mix of first and second fill. Looks like a lot more first fill than second fill, otherwise they would have mentioned. I like the fact that they say gently matured. Of course, what do you mean gently matured? Well, is everybody like roughly maturing their whiskeys? <laughs> I love these adjectives that the marketing department comes up with. So, its signature nose has hints of vanilla oak interwoven with the subtle notes of sea spray and spicy aromatic fruits. As you would expect, I guess, from a whiskey matured in first fill bourbon. The nose is not very different from the double cask. In fact, it's quite similar given the fact that they have very similar maturations except the double cask obviously finished off in Pedro Jimenez, but the underlying sort of base spirit is first fill bourbon as is this first and second fill, I guess. Quite nutty, fruity, oaky and vanilla and coconut, you know, as you would expect. 
But again, a very decent nose, nothing really, really bad about it. A little more mellowed out, maybe by the 15 years, you know. Um, it says rich and smooth on the on the box. So let's see. Chin chin. Wow, again, quite pleasant. Um, very similar experience to the double cask, except the mouthfeel is much better. Um, quite fruity uh, uh, on the palate. Uh, as it is oaky, uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, spices around my uh, lips as well. Um, overall, again, you know, decent delivery, decent whiskey, in my opinion. Um, uh, but again, nothing to really write home about in terms of, you know, it's not spectacular, but again, does well. And uh, let's see how much it costs. Wow, uh, I just found out that this whiskey uh, is about 45, 46 pounds. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. It's a 15 year old whiskey. What are they doing selling it at 45, 46 pounds? Like go on Master of Mort right now and it's there. Wow, that's crazy. But should you buy it? Mm. Yes, I think you should buy this. I mean, if you compare it to the double cask, which is like 36, 37 pounds, just by paying an, an extra eight pounds, you're, you can get a 15 year old Glen Scotia, which is slightly more complex, has better, has a better uh, delivery and mouthfeel. Uh, its flavors are a lot more nuanced. It's mellowed out by the age. Uh, it's definitely a better whiskey than the double cask. I mean, it's a no-brainer. If this was like 55, 60, 65 pounds, I would, you know, then you have like a point of contention and comparison. But how do you compare two whiskeys that, that one is 15 years old and that's, it's, you know, it's not yesterday. It's, it's, a, it's a long time. And selling at 45 pounds, 46 pounds, no brainer. Like don't buy the double cask, buy this. You know, for an extra eight pounds, you get, I don't know, you get another like eight, eight years. Very decent, very drinkable, nothing wrong with it. Uh, for sure, I think you should, uh, you should get this uh, if if you, if it's a toss up between the double cask and the and this 15 year old so well done glen scotia on keeping the prices down i appreciate that while the whiskies are not absolutely phenomenal i think they're very drinkable very very uh, decent and whoa when you look at the price point no brainer absolute no brainer good now on to the next one And we're back this time with the 18 year old. Now I'm really, really curious about this because <clears throat> the double cask, very decent. 15, slightly better, but at a brilliant price point. Let's pour this for you. That's what it looks like. What do we know? We know it's bottled at 46%. Gently matured in American oak and finished in Oloroso. Hmm, okay, where's the box? There's the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Okay, so Glen Scotia 18 started its maturation and refill bourbon cask and refill American oak hogsheads before our master blender hand selected the finest ones and vatted them together for a 12 month finish in first fill Oloroso. The Oloroso finish brings perfume, floral notes, which complement the distillery character of fruit with hints of sea spray and spice and exceptional single malt delivering the true characteristics of a Campbelltown whiskey. Yeah, that last bit, I'm not 100% sure, but a uh, mix of refill uh, American oak barrels and hogsheads vatted together and finished in Oloroso. First fill Oloroso sherry casks, bottled at 46%. And what do we have? I like the nose. Again, no immediate off notes. That's all I'm looking for. I'm just looking for off notes. 
and I'm not getting them. I'm getting what the distillery is promising me in terms of the nuts, in terms of the fruits. Yeah, quite salty and briny as well. Hints of caramel. Again, I find absolutely nothing wrong with this. Decent enough nose. Let's see what the palette is all about. Chin chin. Mm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. Yeah, funny palette. I'm not sure this palette. Ooh, a bit, um, a bit quite malty, but there's a sock sweat feel to it, which I'm not a big fan of. Mm. Let's see how much it costs. Okay, this one is for about 86 pounds online. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't know what happened. Um, this is definitely not as good as the 15, in my opinion. Um, something kind of went wrong on the palette for me. Uh, there was, um, like I said, sweaty socks. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. I've never put sweaty socks in my mouth, but that's the first vision I got. That's the first image that came to my mind when this whiskey hit my palate. And it wasn't a very, very pleasant experience. So while it's not absolutely horrid, I think, uh, you know, it's kind of okay, decent. Uh, but if I'm comparing it to the 15 year old in terms of the flavors and overall price point, then yeah, I think the 15 is still coming out ahead. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is going to be a short review. This one, I'm not... Yeah, oh, not nice. <sighs> okay, I definitely don't like that one. So, 15, still the clear winner. Okay, last and final. And now finally, we have the Victoria. Why is this special? Because this is cost strength. This is bottled at 54.2%. Okay. There you go. That's what it looks like. And what do we know? We know that this is a modern interpretation of a classic Victorian style Campbelltown malt. I have no idea what that means. Bottled at cost strength. It's full of flavor uh, with long, beautifully smooth finish, blah, 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 blah. Each cask is hand chosen for its character and maturity. Huh? So what cask is it? Finished? Huh? Finished in the finest deep charred oak casks. Not sure what that means. Married in small batches and bottled at cask strength. So they're keeping this one a secret, huh? Finished in the finest deep charred oak cask. So I think this is like, could be a mix of a lot of bourbon barrels and then some sherry barrels put together and then kind of kind of finished off in charred casks okay fine don't tell them keep your secrets okay <laughs> quite astringent i think thanks to the high alcohol um uh, yeah uh caramel chocolate nutty but with an overlying sort of, um, not overwhelming, that's the wrong word, but, but a very prominent astringency of alcohol and, uh, and furniture varnish. Not necessarily in a bad way. I think the nose is decent. Um, I'm not going crazy over it, but yeah, decent nose. Let's see what the palette is like. Chin chin. Butterscotch, creamy. Wow, this is really interesting. It just didn't seem like I was drinking a cast drink whiskey at 54.2%. Um, quite, um, quite a decent delivery, medium to full body. Uh, fruity, uh, caramel, chocolate. Uh, what I got on the nose, basically. Uh, decent finish, white pepper spices. So overall, I mean, decent, not extraordinary and let's see how much this costs so glen scotia 
So this costs 77 pounds. Okay. Right. So this is what I think. Um, let's start with uh, the double cask, which I gave a B minus to on nose and palate. Let's give the 15 year old um, a B plus on both nose and palate. Let's give the 18 uh, a C on nose and palate. Uh, and finally, let's give this one also a B minus uh, nose and palate. So this is, that's my final conclusion. I think the 15 is by far uh, the most uh, uh, optimal purchase. If you like, if you have to choose between the four, pick the 15, it's the best value for money. Uh, if it's still available at 46, 47 pounds or whatever that number is. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's probably the more complex of all the four that we've tasted today. Uh, definitely a good sipper in my opinion. The 18 threw me off on the palate. I was not happy. The, um, uh, the Victoriana at cost strength is uh, okay. It's, uh, I mean, it's about what, 76, 77 pounds. Um, but you know, it really doesn't deliver that many flavors as I would have hoped. It's decent, it's not bad at all. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you're going to buy any one of these four, I would say get the 15 for a slightly different tasting experience and a high strength um, exercise, I would go then for the Victoriana if you want, the double cask after that, and finally the 18 year old. So that's how I am placing them on the podium. Number one, the 15. Number two, the Victoriana. Number three, double cask. And in last place, the 18 year old. But before I sign off, I have to say that I am very pleasantly surprised at how much better I find Glen Scotia whiskeys now compared to seven, eight years ago. And I'm happy to see that, you know, they're doing some stuff. They're coming out with age statement whiskeys. They're, you know, mixing it up with the different types of maturation. Yes, some work and some don't. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, but at least we got to try something new today. Uh, I'm happy to have shared this with you. Uh, if any of this helps, please, please drop it in the comments below. I never asked for subscriptions, but today I'm going to so subscribe, subscribe now if you want to save money on whiskeys because I spend all my hard earned money uh, to find out which whiskeys are good and which are not. And so that I can share that knowledge with you. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this whiskey review as much as I did. I am the Malt Activist. Until next time. Peace. Thank you.